All yours, uh, your eyes. Should I stop share right now? Uh, you are good to share. Uh, you can share. That should not be a problem. All right. Uh, you are able to control that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Fine. I should be able to control it. Can you slightly wait? Because uh, the participants are increasing. Now I'm seeing only 20 participants only. Let it uh, reach. Yeah, yeah. We should be waiting. Uh, we should. We should start another couple of minutes, sir. Every second is just jumping three, four like that. Actually, anyway, we'll wait for a couple of uh, one minute, maybe too late. They all need to come in a row line, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think we had good registration. I think uh, this time. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I I need to check on the registration front. I'm I'm, I'm just trying to go uh, on onto the Facebook live. Uh, 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 this this webinar we are also uh, coming up with the Facebook Live and also YouTube Live. Uh, oh, so first time. This, yeah. uh, this is for the first time that the IIT and chapter is coming up with. So hopefully right. the participants also uh, uh, should be uh, should be joining us uh, via that channel as well. Yuraj, is this thing being recorded? So, is it will, will it be available? Yeah, yeah it, it will be uh, available uh, 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 later uh, once uh, the webinar gets over. Okay, thank you. Yatinji, your office looks uh, very active. <laughs> yeah, we have started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so can we go? Uh, can we start the session, or you want uh, to wait for some more time? Or? I think we can go ahead. We can go. Ahead. We can start. Yeah. Uh, good evening, uh, dear participants. Uh, uh, this is IATN chapter uh, again coming up with our webinar series. Uh, this time we have a very interesting architect, uh, architect uh, Yatin Pandya, with us. And uh, I request uh, architect uh, Sendil Kumar, uh, our chairman of IA Tamil Nadu chapter, to welcome the participants. Um, good evening, dear members. Uh, we are successfully conducting the third IA webinar in this lockdown period. I know the moral will be very low in the lockdown period. And with excellent speakers like uh, Mr. Yatin Padia, uh, we can lift our moral high and then look forward to do wonderful works emulating from his experiences. And talking about today's uh, speaker, Mr. Yatin Pandya, uh, you know, like the way in which he modulates his dialogues, and you know, like really most of the time I'll be sleeping during the speeches. When, <laughs> when, the, when we listen to all high-tech, uh, high fi speakers using high fi words, after some time you feel like sleeping. But sincerely, sir, yours is one lecture, one speech, I never slept. Because you know you know how to manipulate and you know how to manipulate and how to bring in the jokes and where to pass and how to allow. <laughs> you are one speaker who will give the audience the time to react, to laugh, <laughs> and then you will start to continue. That is one of the biggest. And then you, uh, you uh, like in, a, in the music and all you know, while singing, uh, they will sing a long line, then they'll take a gasp. I never seen you <laughs> taking a gasp also with me among your speech. I think in, in Tamil we had an excellent actor by name Shivaji Ganesh. Uh, He's called Shavalia Shavali Ganeshan. I would like to call you Shavalia Yatin Pandya. <laughs> Something, you know, like, you know, you, yeah, I think, uh, I'm, uh, like what I'm saying is true. The audience can hear it uh, uh, now, uh, now, you know, like uh, later in the part of the speech. So, uh, so we, we are very fortunate to be with you today, sir, because we have many colleges in Tamil Nadu in rural areas from where they cannot come and listen to your speech. So this uh, technology provides a platform for all the students, for all the architects who are in the tier two, tier three cities to listen to your uh, speech today. Welcome, sir. And thanks a lot for accepting our invitation. And I should extremely thank our friend, architect Durganand, for talking to you, for connecting to you, and then making you accept for the speech. And I should also thank architect Morali uh, for uh, initiating this uh, uh, wonderful programs for the IA Tamil Nadu chapter. Thank you once again, sir. Welcome, sir. <clears throat> yeah.
it should be over to kosal ram yes. to take over vanakkam namaskar a very good evening to everybody and um, we have architect yatin pandya here and he is an author academician researcher as well as a practicing architect with his firm footprints earth it earth stands for environment architecture research technology housing he is graduated from siet university amdavad and also has a master of architecture from mcgill university montreal he has involved in city planning urban design mass housing architecture interior design product design as well as conservation projects he has won over 38 national and international awards some of the most recent ones are united nations habitat award which has a special mention and also the united states curry stone foundation design prize for sustainable practice he has written over 300 articles in national and international journals several books authored by him has been published internationally and he has been involved in preparing over 30 video documentations on architecture he has been visiting faculty at national institute of design and cpt university and he has also thesis guide to nearly 300 graduate masters and phd students in fact he has lectured in over 15 countries in over 100 forums and environmental sustainability social cultural appropriateness timeless aesthetics and economic affordability are key principles of his work i invite agrik atin pandya to comments on his presentation and webinar today towards clean sustainable and timeless architecture welcome sir namaskar vanakkam very good evening i know china uh, chennai has been a bit uh, affected welcome. at the moment more than the rest of the country so i wish you good luck that things ease out better we had a good number but uh, we have kind of eased the lockdown but uh, i think it's very timely thanks for your kind words and uh, it's my honor to be sharing my thought i don't call it a lecture but i think it's a discussion and uh, thought process which we can share and especially at this juncture where uh, even though let me start sharing the uh, you know uh, powerpoint and uh, talk through that that while we had been in lockdown we didn't feel like a jail uh, are you able to see my screen to begin with yeah you are good sir and uh, you can go ahead no issues. okay so uh, what uh, has been happening is that uh, this pandemic in a way has taught us many lessons and so have been many natural so called uh, you know disasters or kind of issues but what we learn out of it is something that i think we need to talk about and take it further it's been a great equalizer in some ways this pandemic i mean with all due respect to those who have been affected but what it has done is that uh, one it has come top down second it has broken all the barriers of uh, class creed economics political ideologies countries geographic uh, you know uh, you know gnps whatever that you have gdps so it's been kind of uh, telling us that all these are man made otherwise as human species we have been all equal and it has also taught us one the fundamental lesson on humility then uh, frugality and sustainability we learned the difference between excessive versus essential we could live with very essential we understood you know we are the same number of people that is on this planet but uh, we always talk that oh we are too many this planet cannot handle but when we remove this undue excessive systems out of this planet all nature has been kind of rejuvenating and it's kind of correcting its own course if the air has cleaned out the water has cleaned up we are able to see far off the kind of creatures which were always uh, push beyond the certain kind of limits have chosen and have found freedom to come out and invade or be part of our so what is the status is that human being does not have to try and become master of nature it is very much a part of nature but it must coexist with nature and this basic principle of any existence is about two fundamental equations and its equilibrium one is human to human which we call society and second is human to nature because we are an aspect of nature and i think if our development models are based on these two fundamentals i think there would be sustainability there would be kind of uh, you know long term 
uh, you, you know, surety of our own existence within peace as well as the kind of comfort that we look for. So point is that how do we turn this calamity, taking it as a pause, thinking about uh, pondering on the things, the course of development that we have chosen. And if we can turn this constraint into a virtue, that this rejuvenated planet that has come to us, how do we deserve to kind of make it better and not at least make it deteriorate further than what it has corrected itself. And this is where we need to go back from where we kind of paused. Uh, we were going for these kinds of uh, ideas of development and progress, etc modernity, we could rethink now that was this smart, if this was the image as the idea of what we wanted to achieve as definition of smart, it creates a question, is it a vision or is it really a slogan? And if that is the idea of smart, we need to understand how tradition been anti-modernity, is this the face of new India, has progress been misconstrued to be growth and uh, where cities really dumb all along, you know. So we had had uh, this kind of uh, paradoxes where we created home, which created community, and that created living environment. And recently, staying in neighborhood, talking with family, and being part of the whole kind of living environment, we understood the value of that as against the idea of number game, that it's a number of dwelling units, which creates a kind of crowd and as a product of a building industry the kind of disparity and affordability and deficit. These are the kind of issues that we know are around us. Urban rural divide, inequality, technological rift, the basic nutrition, et cetera, et cetera. Point is to just acknowledge that development model has to be kind of all encompassing to be able to respond to these realities and acknowledge to find answers. So it is not being pessimist. It's not to kind of get overwhelmed by the problem, but should there not be a development model where there is a win-win situation for all. And for a second, we can remember Mahatma Gandhiji, where a single solution of something like spinning will, and he could talk through that, gender equity, he could talk about poor empowerment, he could talk about self-reliance, he could talk about independence for the nation, he could talk about, you know, progress, growth, whatever, through one single kind of uh, idiom. So can we find such a model where a kind of uh, a direction answers many questions that we have? So it is that the search and this is where through design, how could we add value and bring some some of such responses and be responsible as a designer, as a kind of a social pro, you know, a professional. So to begin with design, therefore, is not about finding one answer to one question. It's about asking many questions, finding many answers to each of these questions, and then picking one answer that answers most to all the questions. So in sense, it's about discretion. It's about adding value. It's like, you know, you go to a doctor and, you know, he knows many things, but doctor looks at the history, looks at the symptom, kind of examines you clinically, and then diagnoses. So he gives you a, a diagnose and prescribes what is right for you. So there's nothing like good or bad about design. It's always appropriate or inappropriate and appropriate to the place, people and program, you know. And that's why architecture has to go or any development has to go through these five mandatory filters. Uh, for example, timeless aesthetics, because building lasts beyond us. Sociocultural appropriateness, because we always do it for others and matching their lifestyle and aspirations is the uh, norm. Then environment and resource management, because as architect, we are triply responsible that first we are the alterer, we change the existing landscape. So what we change hopefully needs to be for better. We can't worsen it. Architect or building industry consumes 42% of energy higher than most other. And therefore we need to be aware, are we spending it for the right? Uh, and we are equally large consumer of resources as well as the pollutant, okay? And our building arguably lasts beyond our own life cycle. And therefore our mistakes also perpetuate. And that's where also we need to be a little more responsible. Economic affordability and structural stability. So these two we might talk uh, not for now, but the earlier three aspects. And if we 
look at, therefore, a holistic design response to create a built environment, a living environment like that, uh, how have we been going about it? For example, this is one slide I show without the titles of where they are, but uh, if I don't uh, you know, put any bet on this, I'm sure we might be able to guess the climate uh, base that it comes from, the kind of material resources that might be available, as well as the possible sort of culture that it might be part of. Yet for academic interest, we can put some levels there. But here I'm able to, or I'm uh, happy to put any amount of bet that what is the kind of place that it comes from. And I'm sure I'm the winner. And if I put this name, you would very innocently accept that, yeah, this might be right. I might have just fooled you, juggled around, and it still doesn't matter. And why India? If you put any name out of the country and the places, it still works. And these are actually correct, you know, from all over the world, A to Z. And that is how it is. So we need to pause and understand what is the kind of model are we looking for? And this is not about turning the clock backward. It's just first objectively analyzing. Both of these are Kerala, which is the appropriate Kerala for us, which is the Jaipur we are looking forward to, which is the kind of Kolkata we need to have. So it is under these kind of questions, if we start understanding for the appropriateness to the place, people and all, what really India is about, what is its ethos? And this is where, particular to India, I would like to begin by clarifying this otherwise synonymously used terms, uh, that is history as well as tradition. To me, they are different and perhaps opposite. To me, history is a dead tradition, while tradition is a living history. When something, both of them come from the past, but something that becomes obsolete for the change time and circumstance, it dies its own death, and that is uh, history. And that is like at once a tradition that was alive but no more relevant and that dies its own death. Quite often that is technology. As against something that may have come from past, have been transferred to generations, but the very fact that it survives today, its survival is a proof of those values being shared and appreciated or acknowledged even in a changed time and therefore it's a living history. Many of our festivals, many of our, you know, subconscious what we do in the daily routine have come from yesterday, but they've sustained today for the fact that they are yet appropriate part of us today. So when I talk about tradition, it's not turning the history, but it's a continuum over the time, which in fact has proven that it is still very much a part of us. And you can say it is a kind of a continued truth for us as far as that kind of uh, continues to exist. And as a result in India, we see this overlay of time. We see moorings of the past laying over the aspirations of tomorrow and together they create, create the realities of today. For example, this is, uh, as you can guess, uh, Penny Pincher Ahmedabad. Uh, here it says Australia calling. It is advertisement to make new generation aspire to become a world citizen by studying in Australia, but the most antique or most traditional way to economically communicate and yet effectively communicate that message is maybe 500 rupees for eight hour shift of a camel card. And it is more effective than perhaps crore uh, rupee slot on a IPL uh, in between break. So if we understand what really India is, then we won't judge the book by the cover, but we would understand the true DNA, the ethos of it. For example, the idea of resilience and endurance. Uh, so how do we turn constraint into a challenge and challenge into a opportunity and we invent out of it? The idea of individual versus collective, where caring and sharing is an important facet of the survival or the existence. Existence through notions and quite often notions over kind of ride the reality or the sort of uh, you know uh, physical thing. For example, you know, if it's a boring lecture, even in an AC hall, it's very stressful versus even outside in a cricket match, if it's exciting, then we don't care about the thermal comfort. And one important example, very effective is that uh, we have this uh, habit and social service self-assumed to paint public corridor uh, red with pan spit, but uh, no warning sign and no kind of 500 rupee fine kind of thing has stopped 
adopt it. But if you plant the icons of gods and goddesses, it still works very effectively because moment that is seen, it is no longer a dead wall. It becomes a shrine in our mind. So if design wise, if you're able to understand, therefore, these deeper aspects of the place and people, we would be able to find solutions which would be effective and yet kind of work uh, for the same uh, condition in the context that we've been asked for. Plurality has been one of the important dimension, which even as an architect, we're most challenged with. How do we create a singular resolution which answers diverse people, and not only for now, but even for time to come? So that's where the timelessness has been a challenge. And what has been the genesis of this idea that we can learn from? To me, the idea lies not in agreeing to one statement or one truth we have found a beautiful answer called multiple truth as many people as many conceptions of god and it is more important where you reach rather than who takes you there you know same way we can find that same six yar sari but it looks different on different bodies and can be worn differently and so and so forth so whether it's a faith and belief system whether it's attire or my favorite uh, you know the sadhya mill the idea of thali and they are perfect personifications of this notion of um, the plurality uh, where uh, you know yeah, like let's take again favorite dish pizza pizza once you choose all your toppings and cheese type and whatnot once cooked first bite tastes the same as the last and tastes the same as the you know, in between, and every is this, every bite is the same taste. You eat the same pizza as I do. We can compare the experience of food alike. Contrary to that, any thali idea of combination meal ingredients can be any. We can have Italian thali for that matter. But cook, cooks, which actually is a raw material, although it's cooked, sabji, dal, whatever. But you first pluralism is you are the designer of your bite. So each bite is a unique experience, is a unique combination. First bite need not taste as the next, need not taste as the last. And you eat the same thali as I do. We cannot compare the experience because my sequence may be different, my proportion may be different, and my combination may be different. So that's a kind of uh, thali we need to invent in architecture. And as much conditioned it might look, we all know that if I say this is Southern Thali, I would be insulting because one region to another, one city to another, even in South might have usually variations. So structure is the same, concept is the same, DNA is the same, but yet uh, the combination and the ingredients can be varied. So it does not preclude variety. This is what we even see that our city have been vital. It's been peculiar with the kind of things that it denoted to that particular place and people versus, uh, you know, same McDonald's, everything everywhere. So with that as the kind of basic construct of time, space and existence in which we operate, how do we create uh, architecture that is timeless? How do we create architecture that is socioculturally responsive? And how do we create architecture that is environmentally sustainable? So timelessness, I'll take one example, which has been my favorite. Why favorite is not it's from here. But it's basically a utilitarian device, a 600 year old structure, which is simply a well as a device to fetch water. But architecturally, it's been exalted to become a very unique and very exciting experience that six century later, even though everything is underground, so it's not even the scale that is jetting out like a pyramid that awes you down. And yet with no functional relevance anymore, everybody descends five to six story to just simply experience that journey through that. You know, and that's why it's a great example of experientially engaging architecture, even though functionally obsolete, even though kind of uh, no kind of a glorified decor, neither it is a king, nor technically it's a shrine so that you revere it with some another sort of a notion. It's a simple engineering to descend to the first aquifer, which runs at about 50 to 60 feet depth. And you have series of steps. And so that earth that you have dug doesn't cave in. It's a shoring strutting. It's a tributed construction of beam and column. Everything below ground, the first signal. So what is the narrative, spatial narrative here comes from the elemental assembly. So look at this. In order to go down, you have steps to climb up. But two outcrop of stone and step denote a signal 
that this is the entry point. Please come here. So it's an invitation to come. Here, you don't see further as this eye level picture shows. The moment you take one step, the void further is revealed. So the nuance that you did not know before comes to the fore. And as a result, there is a curiosity built. As a result, there is a kind of a engagement that you are anticipating what might come further. And that's with that reward of having seen something new, you're going further. Now here you can see there is the whole placement of built and unbuilt. So that void being open and the sun beaming from there, it becomes your first arrival destination guided by the visual clue and you come here. Now here you are surrounded from three sides. So you turn to the fourth and this is where you get magnificent panoramic view as if you know the uh, monument was giving you welcome hug, welcome to my precinct. Here you can see how long this structure is, but you are not a crow to be able to fly all the way till the end. So it's all the time giving a clue and still concealing something. So it's a game of revealing and concealing, not a boring one of simply concealing and uh, puzzling and you become stressful. So it kind of also denotes a further clue. Like I will say, it's like a treasure hunt. You go to one destination and it ignites you to go further. And then uh, because you have to take element called staircase, every platform couple of things changes it's a default in the staircase that you are transposed horizontally as well as vertically so even though the composition is the same your way of perceiving your point of view keeps changing and as a result it looks different and like a thali if you are on center or in the side if you are on this platform or that platform people going through the same route but their experiences would be different and every time if the sun is in a different position, it will be still different, you know. So like in the earlier upper platform, it feels with the less enclosure, almost like a terrace with a parapet. Then you go further down, it feels like a room with little diffused light and a bit more enclosure. You go further down, it starts feeling like a well. And as I say that if you don't walk in the center, it's X asymmetric. And only at the end, water is revealed. So water was merely an excuse. So it's like, uh, it's not the destination, it's just a kind of an excuse. So the whole essence is in the journey and journey that you personally decode and therefore be part of it. So the good architecture is where your being there matters. You might have seen hunt being there gives you more rewarding kind of a thing, even you know that, okay, maybe there's a water that I'm gonna confront. But having taken that journey, you know, if uh, Mr. Trump comes here and commandos drop him down into this water, he better not come, we'll send him the water. But he has to go traverse this path himself and experience that. And then of course, the way reflection, light, uh, and the kind of things change. And even the semantics, so now this is the added overlay. First is the spatial and then the overlay of the symbolism, which needs cultural familiarity that when you first enter, it's a last kind of a plane, but first in the visual line that tells you that it is Ganesh, which means it marks the auspicious beginning. And the fact that there are two association, you going to the womb of mother earth, as well as you uh, kind of going to the water world, the associations with these have been conjured, like here the fish, the same shaft that starts with Ganesh ends with that of a fish motif. So it tells you without even dipping your feet, it reminds you that you come to the water world, the Pataralo. So that's why it's a kind of example of a complete architecture where nuances unfold as you go. And yet it is just a simple functional utilitarian object, but has been you know, exalted to become a social place. Women go there, chat in the morning and bitch around for about their husbands or mothers-in-law, relieve their stresses, it's a social ground for the travelers, and as well as it's almost become a shrine. So, that's what architecture can emote and engage you with mentally as well as physically. Just the similar theory of uh, kinesthetic perception as personified, so that it doesn't seem that these are only good for some building and past. Lee Corbusier's theory of promenade architectural also personified the same concept that how do you walk and your dynamic perception keeps you engaged with the place differently. So from distance, what is a neutral facade, that uh, hypnotizing ramp, I call it a, a frog's tongue, that kind of swallows you in, then it's a ramp. So unlike step well, you don't, you're not conscious of ascent. 
you just walk and you end up so the first floor looks like a ground ground looks like a basement feels like a basement and here that uh, you know this becomes veranda and a gateway to enter then there is a baffle you know you've known it so i'll just uh, kind of quickly run through that so by each of these and then that staircase after you take the turn on the first floor now the staircase reveals to you till that it was hidden if you see this front elevation stair is hidden when you go in now stay after that journey of loop on the first floor it comes to the fore and it now stops at the second and from there diagonal you take another stair and go further even this toilet when you are on the same floor that's a wrap around plane and it's taller than you and it feels like a barrier but when you see it from the you know staircase landing it feels like a sculpture in the overall so same element but your change position makes it look different so the point is that this is how it takes you into the journey and each place has a different feel experience then you turn the staircase have you come like a gateway this is where you see the next clue of how you climb as i said the wrap around plane and it doesn't even show the third dimension per se but from this landing you see the same 2d now becomes 3d it's just like a sculpture in a large wide then another kind of a staircase often we just make circular i mean dog legged staircase there's nothing like staircase it's just a platform to climb and one level to other and the nature in cleveland building is always static nature is constantly changing and east west responses etc etc so this building is currently 68 year old and yet it kind of engages us to the fullest so that's the kind of quality of timelessness and if you take simply the quick look at the principles that might derive that this has come from my book concepts where first dictum of experientially engaging architecture over time is disparate visual and physical access you know where you are to go so sight line is not blocked but yet your physical place is to meander like very effectively personified in southern indian temples uh, and therefore it's a story of junctures nodes like they say you know layers of onion or cabbage if you peel off all nothing remains sir uh, so this is how each node kind of uh, excites you to anticipate something else or to be curious and then the new one is your discovery so even in rajput palaces you have a screen with the light difference it tells you there's something further but you can't walk straight or uh, straight although the plan may be symmetrical in journey you are kind of circumventing around this modera steps they are again not uh, straight you have to take three step then move even in temple sequences it's kind of obstructions in between that deviate the course and even islamic architecture we've been always told it's uh, symmetrical it's axial but with this water body and such landscape feature it is not expecting you to swim and then you know move further so it deviates you and therefore you see the building from multiple point of view so movement is the key and it that transition also of mind because you move through that the way signals kind of engage and absorb you you also mentally come into a different plane for which whatever that uh, you know uh, brief may be about uh, you have like thali multiple choices so it is not also dictatorial path you eventually would land where but you could take your journey from different ways so the whole organization is not planner it's also misgiving actually planner like i said symmetry versus uh, dynamically changing so kinesthetics perception while in movement and this is exactly how you know we draw plan but nobody sees any building like that it's always at eye level and while in movement and therefore this kinesthetics when it becomes the organizational principle that is what i think if we learn then architecture would be that much richer for onlooker and perceiver and another is that building is static nature if we integrate nature in terms of light and view light uh, view air vegetation landform and people if these six are the nature that comes along with the architecture then the whole dynamics is constantly changing it's inherent in nature that's why i said that within the house we did not what was the difference between jail and the house the very fact that you could look out very fact you could talk to somebody very fact that outside day and night rain and not rain things changed it be kind of uh, you know did not have to feel punished kind of by two months of stay within the house and finally the notion that the meaning changes like i said that uh, pan spit on the wall but versus uh, the signal like uh, swastik 
may be auspicious for Hindu, but may be a sign of hatred for a Jew and in the Hitler regime. Now, if that is the idea of a holistic architecture, how have we been designing? To me, it looks like it's a too quick, singular and a literal idea. One question, one answer. If child is dirtying the attire by crawling around the floor, turn the attire into a mop, let him go around and, you know, this will be very useful in a lockdown time. That <laughs> Let the child crawl around, give him a mop and you would have no worry to, you know, and your wife would be very happy or spouse would be very happy. Like, uh, you know, to protect one at a time, for example, your shoe is more expensive, so have an umbrella, not for you, but rather for a shoe, you know, and uh, like here, control all delete through a single stroke with the gadget or eat noodle hot, but you're getting late, so you must have fan to go with. And as architect, we are not behind, you know, for symmetry's sake, for composition's sake, or God knows what, uh, you know, uh, chief architect's sake, uh, we end up into such uh, innovations. Uh, you know, we make uh, amazing innovations, and then we do PhD, how to solve them further, you know. So then we make double PhD out of what way to resolve these issues. Uh, point is that how as designer we add value so design is not just problem solving but it must add value for example here the function is obvious and it should function but either valuing adding value through humor through aesthetics or social message through economics through affordability etc you know so for example you know even very personal something as tattoo do we need to write uh, KR not knowing whether that fiance would last for that long? Or we are an architect, even a scale can be handy. You know, you know, we have this um, uh, Navratri festival and ladies come with a uh, backless uh, cholis uh, and we machos ogle on that. So better have the uh, tattoo as a kind of an eye check chart. So at least the person knows that he doesn't need to look further down. He can't even look at fourth uh, line that properly. And in the process, he would have missed the metro. So he may rather go to the next stop. Point is that function is the same, but how do you add value? Keyboard is a keyboard, but somebody designs it. In addition to it functioning well as a keyboard, can you not think of a three-dimensional placement of it? Can you not think of a flexible contour of that form? Can you think of waterproof? Can you think as cheap as? Can you be flexible with arranging of keys? So and so forth. So that's how, how do we bring in that additional dimension? Like here is like any other switch, a switch. But switch smiles, the ghost smiles when you put it on. If you put it for longer, it frowns. And if you are too long, it really makes faces, encouraging you to look at it and maybe uh, inspire you to shut it out. But in Gujarat, we are not that sensitive. We only understand the penny. So for Gujarat, they have always a special range, like one in the middle top, that every time we have to put on light, there is a slot, you put a coin and the light comes on. So after that in lockdown, we became very romantic that, oh, there is a moon or new moon, let's sit out and let's not have the lights on. But it still serves the purpose. Like the bottom one, uh, there is a, you know, switch with itself is a spring hook. So you come, you put a hat and the light comes on. And when you leave, it will automatically come off. You don't need a peon or somebody behind you. Point is that we have believed in reincarnation, but all these fragile products that we develop today, it's like use and throw. Can we not think of its secondary use that it would not only be a wasted resource, but it would come in handy for something more. And that's where I think the direction we to take it to. We had it long back, 67 or so, there was this uh, beer bottle of the Heineken, which instead of round form developed squarish form with serration. So it became a brick on the wall. When you go high on spirits, it can still be used as a kind of walling option. Technology is a tool and not a kind of exclusive, uh, you know, recluse of the few. So it is simply a tool and use it that way that in a desert to keep the medicine refrigerated, you need a kind of solar panel. Then it as well, it's not a paradox, but it would be a functional thing. So in other words, sustainability is simply a kind of adjustment, circumstantial adjustments. And it is not about equipment. It's not about technology. It's just about performing with the least and not compromising on the kind of 
comfort, effort, etc. And our parallel systems, informal systems do that daily in and out. And that's why we need to re-look at our norms and standard. And COVID has very well taught us that, as I said, that with very little that we could leave. We understood that we can do without these. And if we were able to use the spaces multiply over the time and so on and so forth, I think we would be better off as a kind of a globe further on. The norms need to be performance based rather than prescriptive, otherwise you end up into such contradictions. Uh, if we unduly or unknowing, uh, kind of without any uh, right understanding, pick up from somewhere, we end up into such disasters. Uh, so we must know when we are aping and when we are adapting. And uh, thoughtfully picked up from single source is aping and smartly picking from 100 source is PhD. Sociocultural appropriateness, we are always doing for others. And this is after timeless aesthetics, another criteria we must look for. There was a study done in Japan that if the formal dressing of the executives, the styles and tuxedo, was relieved and they were able to wear informal dresses, they would not get stressed like this, fatigued like this, and actually even physical comfort, their air conditioning temperature could be a couple of degrees warmer for the same level of comfort. So undue dressing was the culprit to having to jack up AC and spend more energy and feel fatigued. So if Mr. Mohanlal or people from Southern where uh, there's a humid climate, if they are wearing the single loincloth or the mund, are they primitive or they are the most appropriately dressed individuals for that particular place? And Gandhi also showed us that he could, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, wrap and unwrap and still kind of protect his modesty. So do we need Shashwat, the eternal Gandhi, who could wrap and unwrap? Or we need Gandhi also to do a line of what is cool and what is hot, uh, you know, by seasons, by fashion, which unduly keeps changing, you know. So that is where, how through design, un inadvertently, sometimes we make a mistake or we simply don't consult the context, we might end up into a problem. For example, this is a small lane and it's been a traditional quarter and century old lane, as you can see is showing positive uh, vibes here. It has uh, been probably ready for some festival. Similar small lane and actually in a new development by a bylaw of having to provide a kind of service lane for uh, not uh, you know having some very dingy environment or very ugly environment with dump of sewerage, etc. So a good intention, but look at this, that there is a window next to that arguably of a kitchen so people find it most convenient because it's a passive kind of an edge to throw all their muck out. And therefore, what was a good intended device has actually become window at no additional cost. If it turned into a door, people would not think as a dump yard and they would on their own develop that as a very positive neighborhood case, you know. So this is what design can do if we understand the context culture of life, etc. appropriately. Like here in Abdabad, which is now UNESCO status, it's for the way of life. It's not just architecture. So you can see it's a blurred interface, house comes out and street encroaches in, as against 15% by bylaw set aside, but not even a window looking on it. You can see that it is relegated into a, you know, no man's land and eventually encroached and abused land wrong in scale and location, too large a space uh, in this new settlement like a rubber stamped uh, block has failed as against our traditional core. It was like a Chinese puzzle where built and unbuilt were internally twined. And it is not the money, it is the mindset. For example, this is in a slum where they could have put few houses, they have kept open space. At the junction of movement, just a plane for dignity and a shade has been enough to give us uh, a kind of a good community space at no cost. As again, this is Ballard estate in Mumbai and forbiddingly expensive real estate even today and beautiful colonial buildings occupied, not left out 
by the who is who of the industrial world, the corporate houses, their corporate offices. This is what it looks like, bottom one, right from the street side. But at the back, look at this, the pipe over the window shows their attitude that they have nothing to do with the other side. And as a result, this has been relegated to a dump yard and junkies place. Uh, what's a posh address for nine to six is not a place to be between six and nine. Okay. So same with the building typology, like uh, we had this, we, you know, Tamil Agraharam or we know the poor, it had actually 2.7 FSI where they were vertically sliced, uh, uh, so to say. Uh, so if you take a cake, you vertically slice, it's the same kg and same volume, but the same truffle cage you cut, cut horizontally, somebody gets crushed, somebody cherry and somebody the middle. Okay. So it is not the difference of FSI, it's how you place it. Same way. This is simply to jump the gun and say the open space on the live left is exactly the same amount in quantity as the ring in the right. But the ring in the, uh, sorry, the one patch in the, uh, the void in the middle, like on the right, allows the kitty parties, allows the kids play area, allows the parking, allows the trees, while this ribbon of 10 feet margin, same amount of 50% of land is good for nothing. So. If we understand what we provide would be meaningful only only in four to five story we can still get 2.4 2.5 fsi Ahmedabad poor houses have 2.7 fsi which is one and a half times more than the legally allowed 1.8 fsi in an 11 story building you know and this is just the simulation to show so what i mean is that this is where we as architect make a difference to change the way people can live and the constraints of vertically divided and therefore indifferent housing where nobody knows each other and they might rather think of a enemy the upper floor because this toilet leaks on you and these examples have shown way back in 67 in a cold climate when this was done this is more an answer for us in a warm climate where we can come out so even if it's high rise how do we kind of come out and uh, be part of the outdoors which we again miss a lot or learn a lot from the present pandemic uh, environmental sustainability there are all these r's refuse to begin with if you don't need don't uh, you know take it reduce recycle region re restore reuse reform reinterpret regenerate and so on and so forth so first reduce consumption what you see top left is 40 acre land, 16 hectare land, where entire city of Dubrovnik, any medieval town, self-sufficient with protection, used to be part of that habitat. Several thousand families still living. It's a World Heritage Site. And it's not in isolation, just example in case. It's a beautiful one. So it's not even a slum. While the same area, look at the attitudinal difference, 40 acre in a cloverleaf intersection where uh, simply a luxury of not slowing down vehicle from 100 kilometers an hour to change direction this is in scale superimposed to prove that point where we learned that how do we multiply use the space this is urban plaza in Ahmedabad in 21st century the sixth mega city this is a cow grazing ground in the middle it's not a grass area it is how the coward brings you buy from him the grass so he's cash rich you feed his own cows so the cows are happy so win-win for all and you think you've done something benevolent, you can start sinning from tomorrow. This is how the same space, the cows are replaced with cars and becomes a business district from nine, uh, you know, about 10, 30, 11 to about uh, 7, 30, 8 in the evening. And post 8 o'clock, now there are two-legged animals and it's become an outdoor eatery with, uh, you know, under the canopy of stars. So active diurnal metamorphosis of an open space. So you don't need five times the open space, same space daily transforms into five different spaces. Uh, this is what uh, Corbusier was saying that we often ignore, even in Mumbai where we crib about no spaces being available, but I have yet to see great examples of terraces being used as a social space. Uh, this is Unity Abitasio and how he has done it. Uh, even terrace as a reproductive resource, left hand side is a sequence of uh, the kind of uh, production or the growing on the terraces, right hand side is a facade, green facade, way back 67, cultures in places have been using the terraces to them. 
So sustainability principles that we evolved over time when there was no electricity and still without fan even people were able to live reasonably comfortably. At the most, we would have welcomed the fan. So this first solution was thick mass. I often get a question, what in today's time, how can you afford thick mass? But we can fold it. For example, we get architectural projection of two feet to put this alucobon panels or God knows what. Could you not instead have a very thin folded uh, modulated facade where on the external side, that two feet buffer could have been a storage, a wardrobe of a bedroom and it would have insulated, it would have given you in and out of the mass that you would have liked and it would, but legally you can't do that. You know, so that's a kind of difference in mindset. So this was insulation, but insulation and ventilation has to go hand in hand. And this multi-tiered roof and the convective principle ventilation we learn from these places. Uh, then uh, terrace has a living space, which uh, as I showed you earlier, that Rajput architecture did it very well. Mughal architecture did it very well. In Ahmedabad, we use it a lot. Uh, Fenestration, we have sun, even we are in contradiction. Southwest is good for breeze, but bad for sun. So Jali, without shutting down the view, it continued on air as well as gave you the view and ventilation, you know. So it, and inside out, you could see everything, but outside it, in, you saw nothing. Mr. Laurie Baker reintroduced that in a very kind of beautiful way in a contemporary works. Venturi principle, the breeze picks up velocity and kind of reaches far where um, and you don't get the glare of the sun and you still get draft with positive pressure going further, which can be ventilated out through courtyard. Then three part window, you know, you go to Bangalore and 24 degree outside and still the hotel, you need air conditioning because it is sealed glazing. If you're able to window that outside 24 would have made inside at least 25 or something. So here the ventilator, you have control like a bite of thali you can permute and combine. The top ventilator can be good for exhausting the air in the summer afternoon. Middle one, you can walk through, look through. And the lower one, where you can kind of, um, you know, have the cool breeze come in. So light view and ventilation, three functions can be permuted and combined like a thali for different seasons, different needs and different uh, activity happening inside. We don't need, you know, Dark, I don't say that you don't use electricity. I'm nobody to preach that. But in a daytime, who gave us a license to have corridor of a hotel with both sides or three sides blocked? So it's a dark uh, alley and without artificial light, you can't even see or breathe. So in India, we have plenty of daylight. We need to diffuse it rather than invent it. Skylight and all these fixtures, you know, and use of terrace festival. This is just one example of Ahmedabad poor where, as I said, 2.7 FSI, 67% ground uh, coverage, only four to five story, no elevator. And the principle of upper floor projecting out, uh, so you get more floor print above. When sun is overhead, entire facade is in the shade. And when next, uh, you know, sun goes low, next building starts sheltering. So without air conditioning, even in Ahmedabad summer, you could stay there, you know. And courtyard as a feature, my hopefully book after uh, I was able to complete it in this uh, pandemic. And it's on courtyard houses of India. And south to north, east to south, Pan India, uh, that has been very precious. So it is not left the worship, the family, and even below the water harvesting cistern, you know. and the, this is mass production to crafts tradition. So again, like Thali, one, uh, you know, uh, kind of a chef. So say carpenter makes some kind, number of brackets, some number of columns, some number of uh, windows, and you permute and combine, and each house becomes unique, different from another, and yet there is a parity. So that identity within conformity. So it's all been practiced. You can identify your house through a door, but doors have a similar kind of a, language, multiple use of space, morning for chores, afternoon for play, evening for socializing and festivities at the seasonal time. Even the, you know, li lifestyle, that what fan does with electrical power, you could do with muscle power with a swing uh, here. So that furniture system became an integral part. And even the spicier food you perspiring allows you to have a kind of very, comp uh, you know, evaporative cooling through 
perspiration being evaporated. So those being principles, very quickly I run through selective example at different scales of a kind of a, you know a sort of a product or uh, to installation to a whole settlement. You know with all these. Uh, so for example, refuse. Uh, this is Ujasio Light and Ventilation. We won the Habitat Design, I mean, United Nations Habitat Award this uh, two years ago, where, you know, there was no light ventilation in a deep long house in a slum. Thousands of houses like that. And the last room was invariably pitch dark because three side it was sharing the wall with the neighbor. So, uh, you know, this is where uh, we said that uh, this was one example way before. Uh, the uh, MIT and uh, Philippines uh, one that how could a, a, pulp, a pet bottle uh, become a glowing kind of a phenomenon at least through the day, but this would not ventilate. So then we eventually uh, in several hundred houses installed this called Ujasu, which means light and ventilation. It's a kind of translucent uh, cast by the kind of small group of people right there and put as a dormer over the roof. And as a result, uh, you get actually, these are all pictures in daylight and it has improved the quality of life of the people in terms of, uh, you know, the uh, education uh, standard because kids can work at home, the uh, health, uh, no stress of eye and uh, gloominess, and most importantly, saving of electricity recorded over a year in all these houses, minimum of 250 a month. and recorded increase in their home-based economic income of 500 to 1500 a month. So that's a kind of a contribution. So as I said, adding value and adding value for improving the quality of life. Reduce to reuse or refuse to reuse. Uh, refuse to build anything new but do things within it. And what was refused was used here. Here it's reuse, recycling the building itself. This is Corbusier's building, and as you can see, dilapidated over time due to neglect. And uh, that we restored uh, and turned it into permanent museum on city of Ahmedabad. So the building which was desolate, and in India we have several of these resources which can be reused as a very positive kind of uh, uh, place. Uh, then reduce, uh, the first was refuse, here it's reduce. This is actually an IT office and we have done fourth or fifth, I don't remember, extensions to that of hundreds of new seats added in different premises. This was a commercial premise we were given. Don't look at the fancy picture of light, which is only for photographs, but simple principles of daylight, principle of opening the window when temperature is valid, principle of uh, nobody's in the, the shadows, so people sit perpendicular to the uh, light and the view. And uh, they have a manual control of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of controlling the intensity of the sun. So we have these uh, blinds of a kind. We have live plants inside to improve the quality of air as well as when it grows further. These are very early pictures. Uh, it can become a kind of a curtain in itself. Uh, and nature inspired detailing so you don't get bored uh, sitting inside. Uh, and uh, energy efficiency. So there's no denial to use, uh, you know, today's technology or know-how. So that's why I'm saying that uh, it's what is valid of today continues and what came from yesterday, which is even the uh, you know, better part of uh, us today, we should not be shy of uh, using it in the name of so-called modernity. That's foolishness. Then redefine. So here, this is a residence for a wealthy person. This has been part of that 51 beautiful homes of India book and all that. But uh, this one, we, you know, our brief was that centrally air conditioned and this vitrified tile and from there we have made them, convince them and they use it as selective air conditioning in few places and all natural palette of material. So that's how, you know, we've used the principles of our own uh, old uh, time uh, vernacular house forms and applied it here. For example, massing from north, south, so a common sense principle of how much of overhang, how much of uh, what kind of massing, the idea of water harvesting and recycling. In the courtyard, we have harvested roof water for even this uh, rich family. Microcosm, uh, uh, you know, kind of climate effect from uh, natural palette of material, microclimate uh, from water and vegetation, 
Here is what you see, there's no false ceiling. This up and down is all natural section. And like the above, the ceiling to accommodate fen, this is a formal drawing room. And you can see the courtyard on the next of it. And that courtyard is an underground tank. And above where the ceiling is lifted is actually a built-in bed. So this is how uh, the same could be architecturally manipulated. And the courtyard allows for light ventilation, but no more monkey uh, and the... That skylight from outside that you saw gives you perpetual deflected light all through the day. Smoke directly ventilates out as well as uh, you have heat also escaping out. So this is uh, uh, for, I don't know, good knows, 10, 15 years without chimney, it's going on. Then uh, light, the dynamics of light, it's ferrocement roof, but uh, little sleet. So with setting sun, it invites you to uh, rising sun, it invites you to wake up. And double heighted area, the, as the sun moves, that puncture of the bird changes its shadow all along. Integration of craft as well as the present science and technology. So it works both ways. You give patronage to the artist as well as uh, you don't shy off from the technological advancement and the positive advantage of that today. Respond. The whole architecture comes by the response to the direction. For example, you see these facades, they are pure facades of Left hand side, you can guess, is the north, which is a naturally ventilated shaft of circulation. And it is punctured jali in a contemporary sense of giving a crossword puzzle. The middle one is south with the reproduction of the jali from the monuments of Ahmedabad. And southwest, as I say, it needs to have the breeze, but you can't have the sun. And sun moves also through the day or through the season. So it's an operable lure from outside with a bend of vegetation on upper floor. So this is how the whole thing responds to the direction that it faces and that's how and this is how internally it comes across. There are interactive games that you do with your detailing etc. Recycle. This is a use of recycled waste material from urban uh, you know fabric. 2,600 metric ton of waste is produced in Ahmedabad alone every day, and that has been recycled. So this, here you can see this has also been there for now good 14 years or so. So this is a fly ash brick with 5% cement uh, waste residue brick. This was just 75 pesa compared to 3 rupee brick bin. This is soil block with 5%. This is wooden crate. Uh, so Wood is very expensive, but crate wood being brittle, it's only used for burning as a fuel wood. But if you kind of change the detailing, we don't nail the glass, do we? So we just put bidding. So likewise, we change the detailing and it has become a beautiful partition. Same way in Ahmedabad, even though it's a dry city, there are enough liquor bottles to be found. And we have used it on a western facade because, you know, sun being low, no overhang would cut down this glare. So we have these... Uh, kind of a uh, translucent uh, glass and the stained glass bottles which uh, glow with the sort of spirit with the spirit of light and becomes a beautiful kind of glowing uh, wall with illumination passed on but not the glare and then we became a little bolder and in further work even here on the top it is a ventilating galley it's a screen where you have the air gaps to kind of also allow for breeze uh, so again, it's location and all of that is a design feature and it's also how would it work, where it would work. For example, nobody gives you five pesa for empty plastic bottle. And after party, there are thousands of them thrown. So here the old widows of the settlement singing bhajans in the evening with a simple inert material we brought from the dump fill site. They, with thumb pressure, filled up these bottle and no pesa value has become two and a half rupee brick in the wall. And they earn some livelihood by doing that. Same way, you know, your I love you symbols of tetrahedral packs as well as uh, Cadbury wrappers and all that. They are neither paper nor plastic. So they were shaded and put into FRP to become substitute for fiberglass. And they become paneling. The thin, illegally you know, sold micron bags uh, can be braided as plastic uh, thread and it becomes the thread with the higher value. This is rag uh, and this is sold by meters now in the settlements. Uh, and uh, the, you know, you make translucent panels or even the Altin container opened up becomes a paneling, uh, crate wood paneling. This is uh, fiber that is the your textile uh, reinforced uh, panel. 
even the digital waste. Uh, so that time uh, CDs used to be available and it became a paneling uh, like this in the door. I'm looking to invent a thing so I can read all that data uh, sitting there. So it would be an interactive door. Uh, you know, these uh, blades, uh, they have been the GI sheet of practically coming from the oil tin container becomes a lure with a crate wood frame, ventilator, scrap door as an interactive door for a crash so that, uh, you know, kids could literally play it around. This was not a design that we need a cycle. The scrap had some parts of cycle and we did accordingly. Same way, this is a waste from a, you know, uh, construction site where you have to pay to offload this waste of irregular stones and wasted uh, material like that. Here we use the same and uh, kind of uh, did a little bit of local shaping and it has become a very interactive floor, so to say. This filler slab idea with an inert material with even digital one with the clay pots. So it becomes a kind of interactive ceiling and it saves on your consumption of concrete, etc. by the logic of. So this is how this structure in the settlement is functioning for 15 plus years. And uh, this is a crash. Uh, so it's a different all day cycle. Two ayahs, uh, two nannies from the settlement earn livelihood by looking after 17 kids in this one. The uh, daytime it used as a school. Late afternoon, it's a vocational training in computer for these young ladies so they get uh, same employability like anybody else. And then festivity, it's a community center, you know, like that. So reusing the waste and that. This one is uh, reinterpreting where traditional principle, this is an institute. So idea of integrating built and like we had courtyard. So here it's a multiple courtyard architecture. It's submerged in the uh, kind of ground. The courtyard gets you shaded area. It is harvesting tank below like Taka, 22 lakh liter from this uh, premise is harvested. No drop of water goes out. Then land is a renewable resource. So before planting the first brick, we had a tree planted and they've grown up. So these are different uh, orchards and whatnot. So they also weigh vegetable and yields. Uh. Then from where the soil was dug, you know, being an outskirt land, the roads came later and therefore we were about eight inches below the road. So we did not import or export soil. We dug up very, very calculatedly certain areas just by about four feet, like classroom and some of these, which got the natural insulation of the earth burning. And the soil that came out from there was parked right around the same site. So now we are eight inches above the road. So 16 to 18 inch manipulation without import or export of even a fistful uh, you know, soil. Then the whole idea of vertically projecting, no software was used, simple calculator to understand azimuth, solar azimuth and altitude and common sensically deriving that. And you can see the picture on the right uh, one is a Southwest facade and that also can get shaded for a certain time of the day and most of the year, and therefore it doesn't warm up. And if you see the section, right hand side is a northeast, which is submerged as well as low, and left hand side is a southwest, so which rises. So there's mutual shading idea, southwest is nighttime use, so it's good for uh, ventilated uh, breeze at the night, and the daytime it shelters. Ferro cement roof, but ferro cement thin roof can transmit a lot of uh, heat, so it's been further insulated with vermiculite and china mosaic and ferro cement saves cement and steel and also without proper form work just by support of these uh, skeletal steel you can do it so overall saving even in loading etc ventilated cavity it's exposed brick natural finish but your ventilated uh, air inside so the hot air escapes out through the cowl that you see from bottom right uh, and three part window in a contemporary way. So air and illumination come in, but glare and haze is not allowed. This is how the courtyard wall itself, the classes which are submerged, the building that comes around, its foundation itself gave you without any much extra cost, the uh, you know deep uh, cistern for harvesting rainwater. So roof water gets harvested. Uh, we have percolating wall to give it back to mother as well as your recycled waste and things like that. Uh, biogas and roof zone is also how we treat the uh, other waste from bathroom, etc. There is a battery less uh, uh, kind of uh, solar generation. This is almost 18 years ago, uh, at least 15, 16 years ago where uh, they've been running the solar pump through that, solar to heating, cooking, etc. 
and uh, barrier free spaces multiple use uh, of the space over time so they don't have big rooms but they can use it for activities up to 5000 people outdoors without having to all having to be in the auditorium dr abdul kalam ji opened it and that time there were thousands of people gathered etc reform how do you kind of use the similar element and create something out of just transforming it this is a memorial it's a i'm just changing the scale one to the other one example of each typology it's only and only created by five elements the fire water etc that you know and this memorial is engaging it is uh, all about uh, guiding you through the movement so design the elements that they come in the sound of water the lead through water this is herbal and uh, kind of uh, ayurvedic plantation because uh, this was a memorial for a founder of a uh, pharmacy so we took that as a kind of inspiration and we planted species that can help in that and they are all with information the whole idea of cyclic time so we have coded dharma, decoded dharma here and the padma vibhushan artist from uh, odisha mr mohapatra was engaged to do certain artwork some local craft people were involved uh, some artists were involved so patronage to these local art and craft uh, this is bhagavad gita inscription so you take like a temple a circumambulation so it transits you mentally also and there is light and water so this water fire by unity right from the center to beyond and these uh, you know uh, stone have been en engraved manually as well as combination of cnc 87 bhagavad gita shlokas are uh, translated in four languages this uh, again this ayush kasliwal the designer did these mudras were created in the uh, delhi airport etc so this has been a kind of a comprehensive uh, place with, as you can see, no really built building per se. This is open amphitheater and it's all kinds of different moods and uh, uh, kind of uh, circumambulation. The only building was the museum building and that also you can see it's a 40 feet tall, but it's been submerged below ground and live grass grows over. So it is not uh, even artificial, this thing. Then restore and regenerate or recreate. This is the settlement scale now, the larger and the last, uh, where um, post earthquake, there are 18 different uh, settlements. Uh, I'm only showing you one as an approach. Uh, so this was the vernacular and they built with mud. Nobody, no bank gives you collateral loan on this. And look at this, even though it was out of mud, nothing has happened to the mud architecture from 67 year old it's been dated accordingly and three year old concrete uh, whatever adaptation they made had all given way same place same impact now you can say it was a fluke the upper picture but the lower picture is fluke two fluke three many flukes to be fluke but the consistent has been here on the top picture right hand side there is a debris of what has fallen down left hand side the new construction on the bottom has fallen down there are commonsensical reasons because when you look from vernacular over time they have perfected and they've understood the forces so not that they were smarter but they've gone through this and therefore they have tried to overcome that so i won't get into details but from its circular form to slenderness ratio to widened base to kind of small opening to stiffening of the gem to sort of a, you know a conical roof so we encourage them to do it in their way of life we uh, supported them with material and stuff like that. They knew how to mix clay with what straw. We gave them, we even created a site plan with the participatory process. Who is your neighbor? You want to be here or there, you know? And then construction also was a self-help. So here we can uh, see that each one created their own set of units. Youngest of them learned from the oldest. So the generational know-how, traditional know-how has passed on like here, 12 year old boy knows how to do this complicated group. So coming to generation now are aware by practical doing lesson of these kind of house type. So it has at least gone through that far. And then the whole thing was done where they were involved. So they have sense of belonging. And this is how with the natural clay, they kind of, uh, you know, doll up their houses inside. It's a kind of a white clay and mirror work, which is also representing their cultural ethos and its scientific uh, design. Because of the extreme vagary of the weather outside, you don't need big opening. So that has been reduced, but you don't want a gloomy area either inside. So you have a white natural clay as well as the mirror work to maximize with reflection, whatever little opening that brings in the light. 
and then the amenities of the other kind were done. New intermediate technology was introduced and they very easily adapted. They did not have door-to-door -door sanitation. Now they have door-to-door -door sanitation and overnight they adapted. Otherwise they had to go way out and their women had a kind of uh, problem of constipation and uh, you know tummy problem, etc. Here this smokeless stove, this uh, decentralized way to get illumination at least in one room, uh, etc. Then from where the soil was dug very consciously, we found a patch right at the site. And that soil was used as a resource to make the block, but that created depression. Left hand side is with government help we could do with the people's knowledge uh, that here was a, you know, kind of a check dam. So we created a proper check dam with uh, GMDC's help. But uh, here on the right, it was the simple block excavated uh, pond and that with clay strata kept water for a few months with just three inch of rainfall in the entire season in that uh, you know desert where camels fly and no vegetation is seen and at that because of the water at their own behest they created this uh, agriculture so now even ecology has changed and you can see the smiles on faces how they celebrate festivities in the rain and this is also we had won the United Nations Habitat Award and we were asked to do I'm not saying it for award but 10 years later they said what has been the lessons learned and if there are kind of anything that has gone wrong or whatever so you document again so these are 10 year later pictures of these uh, where on the contrary they have improved rather than removed and they have built new houses also like that and you can see they have adapted to newer gadgets and yet maintain their tradition so in short, glamour and beauty both catch our attention, but glamour being applied like a fashion, it catches attention, but it's temporal and fades away in no time. But I think architecture, we're looking for timeless beauty, which is integral and it is as fresh all the time. Let me conclude with this one of the passages between grandson and grandfather. Grandson asks grandpa, how old are you? And grandpa replies, Son, I was born before television, penicillin, polio shots, frozen food, Xerox, contact lenses, frisbees, credit cards, laser beams, ballpoint pens, pantyhose, air conditioner, dishwasher, and men hadn't yet walked onto the moon. Your grandmother and I got married first and then lived together. Every family had a father and a mother. We were all before computer dating, dual carriers, daycare centers, and group therapy. Our lives were governed by Ten Commandments, good judgment, and common sense. Serving your country was privilege, and living in the country was even bigger pride. We thought fast food was what people ate during the fasting days like Lent. We never heard of FM radio, tape decks, CDs, electric typewriters, yogurts, or guys wearing earrings. We listened to the news and the President's speeches in our radios. Pizza at McDonald's and instant coffees were unheard of. In my day, Coke was a cold drink. Pot was something your mother cooked in. Rock music was grandmother's lullaby. Aids were helpers in principal's office. Cheap meant a piece of wood. Hardware was found in a hardware store. And software wasn't even a word. And we were the last generation to actually believe that lady needed a husband to have a baby. No wonder people call us old and confused and say there is a generation gap. And how old do you think I am? Now, if there are any young friends, uh, the you know students uh, there, they might think that, oh, this is passe, very age old, primordial kind of a society. But it's just 66 years ago and nothing really as human race we are changed with. These are tools, gadget or support systems that may have changed its name from radio to television and so on and so forth. Let us not fool ourselves that we are as human race anymore transformed. We understood in COVID that living in a family, living in a neighborhood, depending on the sort of support of people around actually did the job. The tool and technology can be of help as a tool, but let's not say our jamana badal gaya and the stuff like that. Even today, a, f a son calls father on 60th birthday on Skype uh, uh, and father would be very happy that I love this technology and father, uh, you know, I could speak and see his face. But if son physically comes next day, early, I mean, uh, early morning of the same birthday or late evening, whatever, the father would only hug and cry and say, son, you just came for me, you made my day and even the death comes, I don't care. So there are certain things which has not changed because as I say, eventually it goes down to human to human and human to nature kind of a bond. And if we base our development model on those two realities, then uh, 
I don't think it would ever go wrong or it would fail. Look at this uh, century old, who is caged and who is tied. One technology brought family together on a dining table, other technology even on the same table has isolated people in their own space on the same time. We had surfing, CCTV and WhatsApp of a different kind. 100 years later, newspaper has changed. Same newspaper, printed one comes in your laptop, you know. So uh, we need to understand what has changed and what has remained the same. So just to end with this slogan that we do, can and do empower through design being that fourth ray as our profession, but we must have the bottom line that we should evolve or add value to improve the quality of life. So empower through design to improve the quality of life. And for that, uh, rather than giving Gandhian currency the value, we need to make Gandhian value as the currency and we can change that. In India, we are in a lucky position that we have this traditional wisdom right in our backyard, accumulated wisdom of 6,500 years, where therefore, if we can inspire from yesterday and yet aspire for tomorrow, we don't have to reinvent the wheel as A, B, C, D all over again. We can pick up from Q, R or S and take our alphabets further. So welcome to in the rejuvenated planet to traverse in the immensity of time and space in the reality of uh, between the notion and reality. Thank you for your patient listening. And if you have any questions, thank you. I have given this platform to share the views. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the wonderful chat. It was thought provoking, inspiring and very refreshing. It actually reinforces all the more on the social cultural appropriateness and timeless aesthetics. I feel personally many takeaways and home, home messages for one's lifetime. Thank you again, Yathinji. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you. Um, it's been such a wonderful presentation and uh, I could have some few questions for you if you don't mind taking it. No, I'll be happy. You just, I, I have no limit of time. You might have technical limit of time. So you please be the boss and tell me. Shoot. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. The first question I would have for you is, you know, how do you change hats seamlessly between being an author, academician, researcher, as well as a practicing architect? There are a lot of hats that you change. <laughs> so best thing is don't wear a hat. I don't even have a hair. So be a bald person and <laughs> therefore you don't have to pretend to be doing this or that. Be yourself and it all comes naturally. I think if you are thinking about something, you just put it in one format, it becomes a book. And if in order to think and go to the depth of things, you must be able to research. This is what even doctors have to do, no? So that they have to kind of look deep about certain diseases and then only they can rightly diagnose something. They have to be kept updated about uh, things. So the point is that uh, to me, this has come all together. I don't even know. I uh, Sometimes I get very embarrassed when I hear these titles uh, coming through. But, uh, you know, just now in this COVID time, uh, we were working from home and uh, I'm not boasting, but I, I was very happy. I, you know, I really found freedom. I saw that it has nothing to do with 24 hours as a limit, but it has to do with watch. That, you know, earlier somebody was watching the watch, that you had to be ready at 9 and you had to do this and you had to do at 10.30. Here, you could work for 12 hours, but if you want to see movie in between, you could do that and, you know, again, come back to this. So I could finish three of my books in addition. So uh, this world would be burdened with uh, some titles very soon. But uh, so it was very natural that you could do. So I, I was able to watch film every day, a new film on Netflix. Uh, we were there, we are staying in an extended family. So we enjoyed, you know, uh, I did dishes. Uh, and uh, we kind of debated on the dinner for lunch, over lunch and over lunch, uh, over dinner, the lunch and likewise, food is important part of life. And likewise, so what I mean is that as human being, if we be ourselves, I think these things come naturally. So I don't think you have to make real effort on this. You have to believe in what you're doing and I'm only sharing. I don't know what I'm putting across, everybody has to agree, but it's just a medium 
and I find that certain tools help. Uh, like for example, the book has its own reach and its own, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, impact uh, to be able to share. I used to write article in a newspaper three years in a row. I wrote weekly column, and it could reach out to even, uh, you know, bureaucrats and whatnot. A lot of them acknowledged uh, about certain ideas and whatnot, you know. So that encourages you to keep going. So, and most importantly, it's like thali that you get bored doing one thing all the time, you know. So simply for the boredom, you you do different things, and that keeps you going. I always say that next day morning, nine o'clock, if you look forward to when you sleep. You are alive and you are, you know, happy because otherwise you are dead. If you think, oh my God, Monday morning, nine o'clock, you are dead. <laughs> okay, very good. That brings me to another question. When I was researching who architect Yatin Bandia is, you know, there is a key word that keeps coming again and again. It's called uh, the activist. So, <laughs> would an architect need to be an activist in society today? That's my question. No, it's like uh, I, I'm not being Gandhi at all, but I'm just using that phrase that uh, you live by demonstration. So activism is nothing. And in fact, I also believe in I'm not being religious, but I also believe in Krishna. Not always you be Ram, but even Krishna, what he said was important, you know. So sometimes with books, you play Krishna. Sometimes with uh, your kid, you become Ram or whatever like that. So the point is that it's activism is a big word. But the thing is that as professional, I think it goes hand in hand. All of us ought to be an activist in the sense that uh, we are not there to satisfy individual clients' fancy. We have to satisfy his needs. We have to evaluate the public good because as professional, that's a difference between businessmen and a professional. If I say very falsely that ballpoint I'm carrying is what was uh, King Akbar's and somebody wants to pay me $100, maybe it's a bad uh, kind of a uh, way of doing business, but it's okay. But as professional, I cannot say that to yours is a low cost housing and you won't get any ventilation in a house. Or if client comes and say that, you know, you have to build my house in a way that a boy from an opposite apartment ran away with my girl. So I want an entire facade in a convex concave glass and his curtain should burn. I don't think you would satisfy that need because you would see that as professional, you have to seek collective good. You know, like even a court of law accepts doctor's certificate that his eyesight is poor and he cannot see from that distance. So he has not to take a bribe and falsify statement. That is where society trusts him, you know? So same way as architect, we have to know we are doing for the collective good of the society. So even though we are doing for individual client, society trusts us that by doing that, we would not harm the collective good of the rest of the society. So that's why that activism part is nothing but to see that where things are right or wrong and something that you voice out through one medium, something you do it by demonstration. For example, this Manav Sadhana, uh, you know, recycled waste center, if that center was not actually built, you know, we had three years of very, very intense research. There are this thick nine volumes of different kinds of research. We went to fi uh, 500 homes in different uh, 250 uh, slum houses in different cities. We actually measured the waste coming out from every house of a different economic strata and a different type of housing type from high rise to traditional housing, etc. to do that research. But eventually that research translated, uh, if not translated into real building, people would say, oh, this is idealistic, this is this, but there are practical problems. We set a benchmark that it should be aesthetically better it should be performing better than the alternatives the slum buys would have, but it should be within the economic framework. So if people use certain things in another way, same cost, what we put should be provided. So if client's limit is not to exceed the cost, how do you manage there? So this is where you come in play to innovate, to kind of question, as well as to sort of uh, find some avenues. So activism is more a figure of speech to say that uh, you have to be, uh, you know, kind of uh, alive and vocal, not by words, 
but vocal in sense of and what you do has to be an actual demonstration of what you think and what you preach. I have one more question before we move to the chat box. My yes. question is, since you mentioned the client and sustainability, yes, my question is, how would you convince a commercially excessively inclined client to embrace sustainability or frugality? See, there are always choices you have. It's, for example, Amitabh Bachchan, I'm not comparing myself, I'm just using him as a, you know, even he would choose what script to take or not take. Okay, so there are always uh, choices you have from refuse to kind of transform and convince. Like I said, that rich person gave me a brief that, look, I'm at my fag end of my life. Thank God he's alive still, very happy kicking. But he said that I've lived in many ways and now I want fully air conditioned house and I want a synthetic flooring so that I can, you know, even him, we did all design, but I convinced, convinced meaning I said, do you have any problem? If you get the comfort by natural means, you can, I'm nobody to tell that you open the AC or not. And trust me, during the course of construction, we went and saw certain alternative material like uh, vitrified tile and all that, uh, you know, by his choice. But before it was laid, he came back and said, Yatin, I think, you are right, and I would go with this so today. It is selectively air conditioned building. They use the outdoor spaces most. I said that it's not air conditioning I'm after, but you have a 2000 square yard plot. And if you build just central air conditioned house, I'm worried that you would not even step into the garden, you know? So uh, that's why and now I have also stayed overnight with friends and all. And uh, morning coffee they take there to son and uh, you know uh, father chat over there in the late evening to guests they entertain there in the courtyard given in the southwest direct uh, sorry the semi covered uh, veranda with a deep overhang given there. So what I mean is that that's another way to educate without affecting their performance. Like I said, client, you think this client had said that use this recycled waste and bottle in the country, they resisted vehemently to say, don't make us win guinea pig, you know? And one, you know, American return, uh, you know, trustee, young engineer was against this idea saying that we are Gandhian and we are using the liquor bottle. It should not be part of our premise, you know? And trust me, the counter argument one, Real Gandhian elderly gentleman, another trusty 75 year old boy gave to him in the same meeting was that we are doing Gandhi's work, we are burying these bottles from recycle, I mean, coming into the market again, you know. So, what I mean is that there are ways to convey the actual benefits, and yet, when you satisfy, what does client want? He wants performance. What does client want? Economics or not to kind of flout on that. And of course, good aesthetics. So, when you give him these three bottom lines, then you have a play field within which you can play. This was our, and lastly, you know, some places, some of these projects was not charged by fees. Uh, and there you get that extra uh, kind of a, a lever arm to say that, look, I mean, I would only do if I have something to play with. Uh, so you get that, uh, you know. So like the very first uh, phase we did, there was this resistance. More than client, it was the contractor because he had to do things different ways, you know. And after that, the client itself agreed to, we did four different kinds of pallet of waste in a subsequent extensions, you know, like that. So that's a, like that uh, interior that I showed for an IT office, we have done the four extensions with 300 people in each extension. Um, they've done well for themselves. And, and each time these concepts they've taken, you know. So on the contrary, they, uh, they themselves told me that the electricity has halved after the renovation, you know, and in a commercial building, I couldn't do anything from outside. So all I did was from inside. And there's just a common sense uh, principles that have been applied there. Thank you. Sentence, sir, would you like to have any questions? For uh, Before you go to the chat box questions. Uh, Yatinji, how long will you be working? Uh, will your office staff be working on Saturdays? Now it's fighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I hope they are not listening because even tomorrow we might work. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I hope now they can hear very loudly. No, as principals, we do work five days a week, but we have some uh, things which goes on for 365 days emergency, so they end up working. No, but we don't take any attendances. We don't cut salary leaves, uh, anything on their own initiative. So we are a small group and I'm thankful to them. 
that uh, on their own initiative, I, I refuse to take any attendance, uh, even in classes where I teach, uh, you come to do this, and they believe that they are coming here as a part of the team. They know they can hear right now if the client scolds me, they can see that I'm napping or whatever. Or <laughs> So we don't have that barrier. And all our architect or trainees, so we don't have any draftsman, engineer, or that we network with. So why? Because there could be a dialogue. So I say every line drawn is a design. So it's a kind of same language understanding, you know. We make physical models. We use computers, as you see, but we make physical models even today. And of course, for clients, we might have renderings, digital, etc. But that's not the design tool. That's a communication tool. So, like just recently, last Sunday, we had a big presentation, and 18 models we had made post lockdown because during lockdown we could work from home, but post lockdown we had few people from local area we could come and. Within a week, we could make 18 models to show it to and client and eventually only saw it through Zoom. So it's just uh, what you believe in and uh, how we... We have our, uh, uh, our the IA, IA joint secretary, uh, yeah. architect CR Raju with us, basically. Oh, Raju, oh, sir, oh, uh, you are alone? I met him before. Uh, Wanna come, Raju, Raju sir? sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hello. Sir, we, video yes, on, sir. sir. You have a better face than mine, so we would like to see yours. <laughs> <laughs> How, are you? How are you? Very well, thanks. Uh, thanks for you know, uh, your hospitality when we came to Oh, pleasure, pleasure. There's hardly anything. <laughs> In fact, uh, I, I was uh, through this uh, lecture of yours. Mm -hmm. I think it, the very I really experienced a very beautiful feeling when I was hearing uh, you oh, speak about you know the thank you. The, the the roots are yeah. more important for our, all of us and uh, the basics yeah. I think we should always keep in mind when we pursue our profession I think that is a very good message uh, for all our uh, architect in uh, Tamil Nadu thank See, you as we come along I think somehow we try to deviate from those uh, basic uh, principles and uh, traits and try to go into a lot of uh, commercial uh, you know things and thing uh, aspects like that uh, which um, you know ultimately lead us uh, to what we are today so it is a nice time that you spoke about you know the back to basics and uh, the natural traits every architect or every professional should have in you know you know, pursuing the profession and that will uh, come you know naturally with experience and I think your experience and your views have really enthused all of us and Thank I look you. forward to <laughs> meeting you soon and uh, you know having a, an excellent uh, interaction with you at some Thank point you. of time. Thank you. Sure. Thank you for the, no, you're uh, well summarized you know when so often you know we are asked that we are many we all as professional come across that it's like a film does prim have to brand as commercial or art you know there were many films which became successful both ways and i think mm -hmm. those are the models we need to learn like starting from 80s govind Nilani or satya ji uh, as uh, sham banekers that earth satya and whatnot it was an art film parallel cinema and yet it was very uh, you know commercially also successful so i don't think you know we need to make that division like, you know, right now, the point is undue liberties and licenses, like very well you said that you have lost that path and bottom lines, you know, principles. For example, IT office, I'm not blaming IT, but even this uh, departmental stores, now very huge footprint, but without any punctures in between. Now, we all know that natural light can only penetrate through three meters or so. And for advertisement of the mannequins and all, they will not even have external windows, even though it is facing a very busy road, you know. Now, instead, the same architecture, like in Ahmedabad, we used to have four feet balcony as free of FAR. So we yeah. as architect invented a sawtooth kind of a plan. So you make jagged edges and all that edges four feet when you add, you were able to almost get three FSI out of one, which was 1.2, which was legally available. Now for that, we could use our imagination and innovation. But the default was that because of that, no place was away from three meter or four meter from the window. 
so mm-hmm. even though it was a bigger building you had saw to to bring you light nature ventilation in so why do we not uh, you know think of that who gave us a license to have a dark corridor without light and ventilation who gave us a license you know in uh, even when i was a student student would fail if there was no ventilation to toilet there were experts in the jury who always looked at toilet ventilation some looked at uh, the kind of <laughs> corridors and cross ventilation and natural light so i'm not saying don't use the light uh, at night but day time where outside we need to wear ray ban glasses goggles why do we have to have light in the corridor like that and we can easily invent uh, some way to bring in light and diffuse light you know the yeah, our own uh, our own um, tradition and history is full of examples yes of sustainability and green elements absolutely green is something different people describe yeah but we have always been you know friendly and sustainable that's right and i, I was, all the uh, projects which you presented i think <laughs> you are following those principles and we are very proud of that and i no, think no, it's, no, 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 it's a uh, inspiration for all architects who are uh, you know uh, youngsters who are coming up to rely upon our age old uh, uh, materials and systems and traditions and in- incorporate them in our design and thought process no i must uh, i must uh, make confession which i always do but don't think i say the same thing in uh, you know gurugram in north but uh, santil kumar would vouch for it when i come to south like i was in trichy often earlier to give workshops and what not actually my conviction becomes stronger because there you leave all these principles in gurugram and because we think delhi um, india as uh, new mumbai india as uh, you know this uh, high rise skyscraper only in mumbai even mumbai has buleshwar even mumbai has low rise uh, bandra neighborhoods but we don't look at that they are also bombayites you know yeah. sharukh khan also lives in the, such kind of uh, things uh, and it's fairly dense there are shrines all over and uh, it's a kind of a neighborhood low rise high density even in a as mega city as that so unfortunately we only think india lives by certain stupid examples of north uh, but uh, actually we feel convinced uh, when we come to south uh, that uh, you know mr ayer or nayer uh, might be in a multinational 9 to 6 uh, in his tamil accent might be in a multinational talking to the world but 6 to 9 he comes back and uh, i saw in a uh, trichy that uh, he would wait for the aarti of the temple and uh, his wife would be doing a rice paste rangoli outside which is a public right of way rickshaw can go by there and then after the aarti he wears his mund uh, he eats his rice and watches rajnikanth movie so where is the contradiction you know in that <laughs> yeah ji can we move on to the other question please please, please. um uh, central sir do you have any questions before we move to the chat box please? uh not questions i just i would like to say your uh, your presentation was like an award winning movie sir there there are no, <laughs> there, there are no no heroes no heroines no songs no no foreign locations where the scene i think the the hero and heroines are the locally available materials and the, and the music is the you are sunlight you are the wind and you know like uh, and, and the director is you the, oh. <laughs> the credit will go to the director only sir thank thanks you, a lot thank you thank okay you, thank you uh, 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 you have been a good art critic <laughs> sir we have a question from a please, chat box please 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 this is from architect prasanna pandya uh uh-huh. the question goes like this the question is is conventional architecture and modern architectural material they constrain to follow the traditional ideas can you give us the success and failure examples to understand how we can expand our boundaries in achieving the timelessness okay i believe there are two or three hidden ones here timelessness does not come by the material timelessness comes by the nature or the potential of engagement that not only today even tomorrow i do that i'm engaged equally so it comes fresh all the time that i see it even concrete can give you that uh, freshness so can be the sun uh, sorry the stone one for example if both the material are bathing in sun if both the material can express their texture differently as the sun moves 
they are looking different at different times so timelessness has to do with the way you organize the space way these elements come across and the way they interact so i would i mean a very 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 quick thumb rule is that integrate built with nature and you have timelessness because building would be always static it would be predictable but nature is constantly changing it's inherent in nature to change for example we used to have courtyard and courtyard brought in different light through the day we have window to look out and you know 70 channels in a tv we get bored switching channels and uh, looking out of a window it's fairly kind of uh, exciting to keep engaged uh, there looking at the street you know grandparents can come out onto the street and spend the whole day by the spontaneity of the way people move and whatever happens every day dra drama doesn't happen but it's a kind of natural routine as a drama that happens there which does not come in as uh, you know spontaneously in a television so i would say that uh, you know timelessness has to do with uh, how it engages you every time and that's why some of those principles i said that you make it like a personal discovery you know any food which is a combination food then you are not uh, you can make your own taste every day like uh, tomorrow same same thali but uh, if i am from scandinavia or i am today bored and i want to have little sweeter palate i can change my combination i can have more rice and less pickle and it would be blend i could reverse it and i could do that first bite is bland second bite is very spicy that's why you have idli which is as bland as it can ever be and uh, at the same time chutney can be spicy it can be salty rasam can be spicy liquid versus solid crunchy versus glossy uh, sweet versus sour so it has multiple infinite combination and this is what nature brings in nature as light nature as uh, wind nature as vegetation because tree decomposes there is bird coming it blooms and that's why even in our project we try to plant trees which are seasonally blooming so you appreciate the bloom of summer versus winter bloom both by flower as well as fruiting i've always wondered why cities plantation is not a fruiting tree you know you could have even if anybody throws stone and takes away at least somebody gets it but if i grow cactus nobody gets it you know like that so you could enjoy the mango in the summer or you could enjoy another fruit in monsoon and likewise you know so point is that by nature nature is changing and when architecture interacts with nature then it's timeless so that is one part now coming to material part conventional modern there's no such division you know it's how you treat it is where you might recollect it by time stone is a stone is a stone even the paleolithic age somebody scooped out the cave and created stone architecture then the dressed one and then even now the mirror polish slabs so stone has not changed how you treat it because of those tools and technology we might say might represent this time that's an association that is not again inherent to material you know so point is that if you understand the parameter it's like do you think doctor need to be uh, you know kind of uh, mugging up the medicine no and that's why generic medicine has come in you don't have to know it by the brand but as generic medicine prescriber you have to know i want a light tone flooring i want it glossy near the window so that light can you know sh shimmer and shine and it can feel endless i want here i want a grip so there must be a little texture you know and i want to create a visual focus so i might have an inlay in the middle okay and if this happens to be a puja room i might have a uh, you know mandala or whatever as a inlay so what i mean is that it is all these parameters that decide it it is not you knowing the so and so company and new product they only to your light so you prescribe first same way the strength of the material for example we have yemen 15 story skyscrapers in mud and we think that when we think of mud by association that it is the weakest i'm not advocating mud what i'm saying is the association if i say mud or oh, weak material but the same mud you know clay if you bake it it not only hardens but it is not water soluble we drink tea coffee water out of that so it is how you transform that for what performance as against we are making happy sand castles on the beach 
So every time, you know, with water and whatever sun, it will dissolve. So mental mindset is that earth being weak, as against the tallest building, if it is Alburz or if the new one is going to come, it casts all its weight on earth. So how on earth can earth be a weak material? Okay. But if you know that earth is good in compression, you apply it accordingly. So Hassan Fatih learned that and understood that and he created wonderful architecture using that material within its own property. You don't subject it to tension. So he used this, uh, you know, kind of, a, uh, what, what is that word called? Uh, uh, we'll come back again. But uh, that kind of a vault and uh, uh, created without even a form a beautiful architecture. As against, if we think concrete, and we would think of oh, strong material. But if concrete without steel is the weakest material, that's why we have to reinforce it with steel. If you did not have this two feet ugly beam, it would not span and stay. So that we think is a strong material. Okay, so it's just the mindset. The point is not to fight about, for example, I always, as a figure of speech, we say steel and glass. But glass in a south facade without protection is a problem. But glass in an interior between two cabins to translate the illumination going through and not to isolate two people from looking at each other. So it is very kind of uh, friendly and it must be used. So it is not about a swearing in of not ever use this material. Like in Kutch post earthquake, we did 18 villages rehabilitated. I only showed you just one as an approach, you know. But I was as much proud and it was my decision to use in that the earth block as they made it and used it. All other ones are not bunga. They are other kind of design. In one, there was a hillock around and the stone was very cheaply available and they knew how to do in stone. And those houses were made in stone in the same district, but it's a white district. So there are variations to that. Same district in one village, I remember there was no resources and we had to get material from somewhere. So we got ready-made concrete hollow blocks. And I'm as much proud and uh, you know satisfied about that choice because no water, no nothing, it would have been a burden to do something else there. Okay, so it is not taking a vow. As I say, it's exactly like being a doctor where you treat a patient on its own merit. You don't say it's a rich patient I treat with modern and it's a poor patient and I treat with this. Even a most rich patient, Mukesh Ambani, should also be not subjected to CAT scan unless your clinical uh, you know, test uh, you can't make out. You must first see the pulse, use stethoscope, see his breath, and say, you're not suffering from cold, don't worry about COVID, please go home. You're into dis depression by getting a lot of these tie-ups or enjoy your life with the family and you'll be cured. You know, so sometimes it's a placebo effect. So what I mean is, uh, is that kind of so it's not branding this material is new and contemporary this material is old you know Corbusier showed that uh, you need the apitasio and it's very geometric application of concrete and uh, you know many other places Rosha and likewise it's a very plastic application to me that's a good application of concrete because like clay co uh, concrete is a very plastic material as you mold it would shape and if I use it like a plain wall, then what is wrong in a brick? Same way in traditional time, brick squinches, this, uh, you know, Muslim domes on the mosque, they could cover in a compressive force by corbelling each layer subsequently coming in. And that created beautiful internal profile. The squinches gave a three dimensional kind of a form inside. So that was also a material, but learning and understanding what it characteristics was and yet what performance we wanted out of it okay like a uh, step well that pictures i showed you step well may be wide but uh, lift to be able to lift the column and to place it uh, in a place uh, so you must have not more than 12 to 14 feet so you have intermediate column and thanks to that column and beam you get beautiful frames and it even adds to the architecture of it without that frames if it was just the step it would not be a same architecture which you can very well experience in pattern where upper three floors, it's all broken down. And it's only step, step, step. But when you come to the portals, that's where you feel, aha, there's architecture, there's a feeling about this space. Okay. Yeah, Tinji, we almost ran out of time. Exactly. <laughs> right. Time is never enough.
<laughs> so uh, we have many more questions, but I due to the paucity of time, we will collect them and send it to you. And whenever you have time, kindly respond to that. Definitely. And right. uh, we could we, we conclude this session. And uh, I request Agrik uh, Loganathan, Joint Honorary Secretary of IIT in Chapman, to take over. Logan, you will have to unmute, please. Kathinji, thank you for the wonderful That's story <laughs> of uh, so many variants and from where we are uh, at liberal uh, liberty to pick up uh, so many things and mix up and uh, have. And um, as uh, our chairman rightly said, uh, we are also very much overwhelmed to talk to an award-winning uh, director <laughs> who shoots all his movies uh, not in the foreign location and you know it's more uh, uh, traditional actually uh, we, we 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 find every time you no know, we we get to your presentation uh, there is a wonderful feeling about the traditional values and uh, those kind of things like and uh, the way you are asking us to identify the problem and give solutions that are multiple usage kind of thing that is another uh, uh, learning from every time we have it uh, thanks for uh, introducing the new R value in buildings, the reuse and uh, refuse and uh, regenerate and uh, so on and so forth. That was a interviewing, uh, you know, field that you know you gave with all ex ex examples and particularly that particular uh, uh, non-centralized air conditioned uh, house that you showed. That was uh, highly, uh, you know, inspiring. So we thank you so much from the bottom of the heart for uh, being with us in uh, Tamil Nadu with the uh, IA Tamil Nadu chapter with all the uh, your such information and uh, uh, thanks sir. And, no, thank uh, you for giving me this yeah. platform and with yeah. all your faces I feel yeah. I'm in Tamil Nadu except that I don't get those dosas and the coffee so <laughs> some other time we'll catch up on next, that. Next time, uh, next time we will give you no, a dress you. code also with the mundu and all that. So <laughs> yeah, last last time uh, it yeah. was uh, Coimbatore. I think we got wonderful yeah. sari as uh, with yeah, our yeah. names inscribed. Yeah. So. Yeah, sir. No, thank you. I have wonderful okay. memories from the south, and I thank all the participants for patiently <laughs> going through this grind. And thanks for this platform. Thanks a lot, and, and, uh, and all the best. We from, uh, keep safe. <laughs> yeah, we from IIA Tamil Nadu chapter. We thank all the participants yes. who have actually taken time to come and uh, be with us. We thank our uh, chairman uh, architect Sandil Kumar uh, for getting this whole thing. Our uh, Particularly, architect Durganand, who has yeah. been a uh, you know <laughs> initiate, initiating this particular uh, thing, be, be, yeah. being a bridge between you and us, and uh, architect Murali for also initiating this uh, program. Thank I thank uh, our moderator uh, Kosal Raman for uh, be, uh, helping us in this, and uh, uh, I bottom of the heart I thank architect uh, Yuraj. Yuraj has been a wonderful uh, technical coordinator. You know, yes. he just does all these things in no time actually. Yes. So he does this like so a he is wearing more hats. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is a this is a kind of a trademark he is trying to uh, uh, display. And, yes. Uh, so that's the thing. And uh, we thank all the people who are involved in this. Our uh, Anthony Morris, who has actually designed that wonderful, uh, nice, uh, uh, peppy uh, uh, invite. And uh, thanks all the participants for being here thanks, and spending time with us. Uh, thanks one and all. Thank you. All the Thank best. You. Stay safe and stay Thank positive. You everyone. Bye Thank bye. you everyone for coming stay over. Safe. And uh, stay connected, stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, we from IA Tamil Nadu chapter we shall be coming up with few more webinars. Uh, stay connected with us. Thank you. Stay positive. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>